I've had an email from Jed who lives in Salt Lake City, which is in Utah in America. And Jed says that he's done a one day navigation course and that he simply didn't understand why you need to adjust your compass for, for declination as the instructor was talking too fast. So could I give him a really basic idea of what it is? And really basic is in capitals. Okay, Jed, I'll try and I promise not to speak too fast. So I'll give it a go. But as soon as you start talking about declination, it can get very complicated very quickly. But if you watch any of my other videos, you'll know that I really do like to think keep things as simple as I possibly can. So firstly, let's deal simply with the question, what is declination? It's very easy. It's the difference between true north and the direction that your compass needle points. That's it. Now, okay, that said, which direction is true north? Again, I'll try and give you a really simple answer. True north is just a straight line from somewhere to the geographic North Pole. The geographic North Pole is the point at the top of the world where the Earth spins on its axis. Now, our compass needle doesn't point towards the geographic North Pole. It actually aligns with the local magnetic fields in your area and points generally at a place called the magnetic North Pole, which is a, a moving area near the top of the world at the moment. And as the magnetic North Pole is moving, it means that the direction your compass points to changes over time. But when I say that, remember, you know, when you hear that the magnetic North Pole is moving, we're talking about something on a planetary scale. It's not moving very fast. <laughs> so if you go walking somewhere and then you go walking in the same area a few weeks later, the declination will be about the same, you know, that's fine. it won't make any difference. But if you go back to the same area a few years later, then you will need to check the declination just to make sure it hasn't moved dramatically. Just as a point of interest here, in a magnet, the energy fields come out of the north end of the magnet and they go back in to the south end of the magnet. But on the Earth, the place which by tradition is called the magnetic North Pole is where the Earth's magnetic field goes back into the ground. As an example, if you were standing at the magnetic North Pole, your compass needle would point straight down. So it's actually the southern end of the Earth's magnetic field, which is at the top of the world, somewhere between Canada and Siberia. And this is the reason that the north end of your compass points at the top of the world as in magnets, opposite ends attract. So the north end of your compass needle is attracted to the south end of the Earth's magnetic field, which isn't in Antarctica in the south, it's in the Arctic, which is in the north. Oh well, but again, let's go back to keeping things really, really simple. Another question, how does knowing that the declination is the difference between true north and magnetic north, how does that help us navigate with a map and a compass? The simple answer, Jed, <laughs> it doesn't. And I know every, lots of people will tell you it does, but it really doesn't. And the reason it doesn't is that when I'm out walking, you know, I've got a map and a compass, and I really don't want to get my mobile phone out and use a calculator and spend a long time doing calculations, working out which direction is true north. I just want to go walking from somewhere shown on my map to somewhere else. And as I don't really know which direction true north is, I have to use the next best thing. Now on your map, which are, is a flat piece of paper, there's a grid of horizontal and vertical lines. And if you were to extend the vertical lines past the top and the bottom of the map, they would keep going all the way to the North Pole and the South Pole. Now, as the world is approximately round, there'll be a big gap between the lines near the equator, and this gap will get smaller and smaller the closer it gets to the poles, until eventually all the lines converge at the same point. And the result of this is that the, the lines are, you know, they're bending around the world. And the consequence of this is that the lines on your map are slightly curved. Well, they should be. <laughs> but 
If you were flying in an aeroplane or a sailing ship across the ocean, this curve in the lines has to be taken into account. But when you're planning a route to go walking, you know, which is what I do, I only look at land navigation and walking in the countryside. So this tiny curve in the lines makes no difference whatsoever. So to us, you know, walkers and trekkers, grid north, which is the direction the lines on your map point to, and true north, a straight line from your location to the geographic north pole, they can be treated as the same direction. So you don't need to work out where true north is. All you need to do is look at the grid lines on your map and most people will assume that magnetic declination is the difference between the lines on their map and their compass. Technically it isn't, but it makes no difference. We can treat them as the same. In most countries, the vertical lines printed at the center of a paper map is the one that is most aligned to true north. You know, if you really wanted to concentrate on true north, it actually points the most towards the North Pole. Now, as the lines are normally printed parallel on a piece of paper, the lines either side of you know, this central point, as they go outwards on the map, they point in slightly di different directions. But as I said, for trekkers and walkers, it makes no difference. So hopefully you now understand why your map and compass point in different directions. And this difference is called declination. Now, obviously you can't change a paper map you know once it's been printed so we need to adjust something to make sure that we're going in the right direction and we can't as I said we can't change the map so the only thing we can change is the direction that our compass points so Jed I've just checked and at the moment the declination in Salt Lake City is just under 11 degrees east now I've done lots of videos dealing with declination and I actually said I wasn't going to do any more um, declination videos but so this one this is just for you but the absolute basics are that because your declination in Salt Lake City is east I'm not going to explain what it would be if it was west because it's not relevant Salt Lake City has a, just under 11 degrees east now as I said the basics are that if you take a bearing from a map you need to adjust your compass by subtracting 11 degrees from whatever your map tells you. As an example, let's say that you take a bearing of one, two, three degrees, and it's a grid bearing because you've taken your, you know, you've used a map grid to get the bearing. You need to alter this bearing by subtracting 11 degrees. So your one, two, three bearing becomes one, one, two. So you change your compass and then you follow the direction arrow on your compass. Now, if you take a magnetic bearing from a ground feature, like a road or a mountain top, it's called a magnetic bearing because you're using the magnetic needle in your compass. So that's that. So you use your compass to take a bearing from something that you can see. You would then need to add 11 degrees before you can use that bearing on your map to find that feature. So, Jed, hopefully that explains what declination is and briefly how to use it. As I said, I've got lots of videos on how to adjust for declination, but um, hopefully that answers your question. Thanks for watching.